This video demonstrates two different endoscopic techniques for the management of two cases of acute buried bumper syndrome. Case 1 is a 56-year-old woman with chronic pancreatitis who had uncomplicated placement of a 24-French gastrostomy tube and a 12-French jejunostomy tube. The patient presented to the emergency department five days later after an accidental partial pull of the G-tube. On physical exam, the vital signs were stable, the G-tube was only 2 cm under the skin, Erythema and duration and tenderness were noted at the gastrostomy site. A CT scan of the abdomen was performed. No abdominal free air was noted. The G-tube internal mushroom bumper was buried within the interior abdominal wall along with surrounding inflammation. The J-tube was still in adequate position. Treatment options and risk were discussed with the patient. These included surgery or endoscopy. The patient opted for endoscopy. A gastropexy was performed under endoscopy and fluoroscopy guidance and using a COPE gastrointestinal suture anchor set. This included two spring coil suture anchors or T fasteners, an introducer, and a loader. Two T fasteners, one on each side of the existing gastrostomy tube site, were placed within the gastric lumen and pulled back to the level of the gastric wall, then sutured to the skin. A wire was then advanced through the existing J-tube. The J-tube, then the buried G-tube, were manually removed and replaced by a 28 French MIC balloon PEG-J, which was advanced over the guide wire. The internal balloon was overinflated to 12 cc of normal saline and snugged to the gastric wall by standard external disc. The patient was seen in follow-up two weeks later. An abdominal CT was performed. This showed decreased inflammation with the MIC GJ tube in place. The external gastropexy sutures were then removed. Case 2 is a 44-year-old woman with chronic pancreatitis and malnutrition who had a similar presentation of acute buried bumper syndrome nine days post-placement of a 2412 French GJ tube. The CT scan of the abdomen showed no abdominal free air. The G-tube internal mushroom bumper was buried within the interior abdominal wall along with surrounding inflammation the J-tube was still in adequate position. The J-tube was then manually removed. The internal buried bumper was firmly pushed inward towards the stomach lumen. A wire was advanced through the existing gastrostomy. It was grasped with a snare and pulled out of the mouth. Two bars were manually created by cutting two segments of an 18 silicon J tube. These bars were manually added and sutured to the internal mushroom bumper of a new 24 French G tube, allowing to increase its surface area. This was lubricated and passed over the guide wire through the mouth and into the stomach, pushing out and replacing the buried G tube.
A J tube was then passed through the G tube and advanced over the wire placed endoscopically to the jejunum. In conclusion, acute buried bumper syndrome is an uncommon complication of PEG-2 placement and represents a potential surgical emergency. We presented two cases of acute buried bumper syndrome managed with two different endoscopic techniques.